I want to start back where we, we started with South Carolina. Uh, for, yeah. First of all, um, I think Spencer Rattler played really well given the circumstances. But I agree with you. I think given the circumstances, it, it's going to be difficult for him going forward. The, the offensive line is a mess. They don't have a running game. I mean, that is that is a bad, bad jumping off point. Uh, but look, this is this is panic week, right? Things don't go yeah. well for your team, and, and you panic because that's all we got. Shane Beamer has had a history of getting teams turned around by the end of the season. You don't even recognize what you see on the field, and and given history, I would I would bet on that. It's not like it's a terrible roster. The offensive line should get better, but I want to ask you this. Why was the whole narrative that South Carolina is going to go down there and take care of business, given the way Beamer's teams peak and when they peak, and, and given the issues that were already on the radar as potential issues before we saw them really exposed? Oh, man, I, I think that so many – I think that so many people were caught up from last season. Yeah. I think so many were people were caught up in the win over Tennessee, beating Clemson, probably should have beaten Notre Dame in the Gator Bowl, um, even though Notre Dame played pretty darn well in that game. Uh, and so in South Carolina, it was back and forth. I think you, I think folks looked at that and they were like, okay, yeah. if it's, if it's going to be maybe the same style of offense, because let's be honest, they took everything out of Marcus Satterfield's hand towards the end of the season offensively. They said, Spencer, go do your thing um, and, and start slinging the football. I think when you saw that, you would think it translates into a competitive game against North Carolina that they can go back and forth on offense. So really what happened is last year set up the expectations for the North Carolina game. Yeah. For, okay, we can go back and forth. We can – Spencer, you know, they score. If Drake scores, may uh, then then Spencer can drive us right back down the field and hit Trey Knox for a touchdown. Like that's just how. So it's not a bad thing that you were set up with those expectations, but you have to look at it realistically and understand that this South Carolina squad right now is very young. They might have a veteran quarterback in Spencer, but the rest of them. That is a squad that is going to take a couple games and they're going to have, you know, they're going to be playing Georgia here soon. That's going to be an eye opener. But I, I just feel like to me, brother, that new offensive coordinator and Dow Loggins, uh, yeah. Shane Beamer trying to, you know, stay out of the way, let them do their thing. Um, and I think that, and there, look, I, I was at, I was in Columbia. You know, during the off season, the expectations were were really high. Through the um, roof, yes. And they thought that that game with their recruiting and what they were doing at the time, and then all of a sudden you lead into the the North Carolina game, that it was almost going to be a one two punch. And yeah. I think it's it's not South Carolina's fault. I think folks forgot Drake May in North Carolina. Yes is actually going to be a pretty darn good team this year and fight for the ACC, and Mac Brown still's got it. They still got it. Yeah. No, I agree. Drake May was the reason I picked North Carolina to win that game in the first place. I mean, he's a potential franchise quarterback. Those guys don't come along every day. When in doubt, I always go that direction. But I want to ask you something, because you've gotten to know Shane Beamer. I've never met him. Uh, I, I like him from afar. Everything that I hear about him, and, and for that matter, another coach in that state who's come under fire in Dabo Sweeney, <laughs> is that they're very genuine guys, they're very well liked. Um, you know, in, in a world where sometimes the coaches that run these programs aren't the best people, I always like and respect that and root for those guys. I, I like Shane Beamer, I root for him personally. Um, I, I want to ask you though. One thing that I see with him that, that's continual, and maybe he grows out of it, why does he spend so much time with his ear to the ground and his eye on Twitter and, and reacting to things that if he just ignores, uh, you know, the, the whole thing with Spencer Rattler, I don't – that's the side about Shane Beamer 
where I think he needs to grow up a little bit that that I don't get because th- th- there's really and, and I'll tell you now that I wasn't crazy about his offensive coordinator hire either uh, as is a Titans fan, but but other than that, there's there's a lot more to like there than not to like. And again, I point to culture and the way his teams play at the end of the year, and I don't think that's coincidental when you see a lot of these teams built in the portal. It falls apart at the end when when guys don't get theirs or whatever. That's one thing I think Shane Beamer has got really right. But there's a couple things that I want to see him improve on before I think they take the next step to where they would like to go. Is that fair? I, I don't dis I don't disagree with you. I think that Shane Beamer, the way that he is, Chris, um, young coach wants to stay up to date with things that are going on, likes to have fun on social media because it helps with recruiting, in my opinion, in this day and age. Look at Lane Kiffin. Look what he's doing. Uh, A lot of people outside of Ole Miss might not like Lane Kiffin, but the recruits that he goes back and forth with, the, the, the fun that he has, I mean, I can tell you firsthand how much fun I've had covering Lane Kiffin. But there's also a downside of that. With Shane Beamer, it's different. Like Shane Beamer is that guy, that 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 nice dude. But you get him in a situation, and he you know, he's going to flip the switch on you, Chris. Um, and I mean that in a way of you know, it's it's not all hunky dory. You know, this is Frank Beamer's son, and he's you know he's happy all the time and all that good stuff. Uh, Shane Beamer is a coach in the Southeastern Conference. Um, there were a lot of things he wanted to say Saturday night besides talking about the chain crew eating a hot dog. Okay. That, that was obvious. That was his, if, if you know Shane, that was his way of not deflecting, but just kind of being nice in the situation when it could have been a lot worse. He wanted, he wanted to talk about the officials. He wanted to talk about some of the holding calls. He want, But he didn't. He just talked about the chain crew eating a hot dog, which was a funny soundbite. Um, and, and, he, and he knew that. Like, he's not dumb. Like, he's not going to get up there and say something that you know, not going to garner some kind of attention. But I, but I think overall, I think that Shane Beamer is a player's coach. And I think Shane Beamer's activity on social media and the way that he go about his job, I sit there and watched him do it for a full 16 hours this offseason. I was in there, and it wasn't fake, and they weren't putting on a show. It wasn't the Truman Show or anything like that when I was there. It was, it was, it was Shane Beamer being Shane Beamer. And, you know, you, you don't get a lot of that in the Southeastern Conference. You get a lot of people – a lot of coaches that will keep their guys at the facility till 12 o'clock at night, every single night, and not let them have a family life. Uh, Shane Beamer is not one of those guys either. Wants his guys to, to go out and, 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 you know, don't lose what you have in life just because you're a college football head coach or a college football coach. I, I just, you know, it, it's a, sorry for a long-winded answer, but I, I think that Shane Beamer, you know, I think if he can go, if he can win eight to nine games every year, he's going to be just fine in South Carolina. You know, the boosters aren't in there saying, hey, we want you to go fight for a playoff spot right now. So I just feel like, you know, got to gotta figure out a couple of things this year. I think the future is pretty, pretty bright for them. No, I, I agree, and that, that's a good point. Uh, I heard a coach one time say, hey, I want my kids to have something else to do other than their sport because that way when, when their sport goes wrong, their whole world isn't crumbling at once. And actually it was Tim Corbin that said that. I thought, man, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and, and that might explain a little bit of why they do well at the end of the year. Because, look, what, South Carolina in October, the last two Octobers, has not impressed a lot of people. But, but then they flip the page into November, and look, I'm going to bet on that today. Uh, I don't even know their schedule. Uh, they got, let's see, November's Jacksonville State, Vandy, Kentucky, Clemson. At that's, this point, that's four, four and oh. 
Yeah, well, I mean, G- G- Kentucky might beg to differ, but oh, okay, um, I'm you said Kentucky. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. I, I no, but but I mean, but yeah. but maybe not. I mean, look, Kentucky's no no less winnable at this point of the season than than, than Tennessee and Clemson would have been a year ago. So I, I don't think right. that's unfair. But but point is, I I do think there's something to the way he's built this program. I just think he could sand the edges down there a little bit, and it wouldn't hurt anything. I don't. I don't disagree with you. I. I really don't. I don't. Um. I. I think. I think he's in a better situation right now than Billy Napier is at Florida. 